coming. You know, I was like to take this opportunity to talk about myself. The man of the hour. And let me tell you something, Daddy. When you're the man, you make history every time you step foot in this ring. And that's the bottom line. Wrestling Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 107 of the Top Sweet Wrestling Podcast. Yes, indeed. We got a lot to talk about, man. Every a lot of a lot of people released in WWE. Sad stuff, man. I'm gonna hop into that. AEW NXT. I'm gonna hop into some highlights from there too. Ronda Rousey. A lot of things to talk about. But first, you can find me at link to ri.ee slash two sweet pod. That's the number two, Sweets P.O.D. That's all my listings for this podcast on Twitter, as well, at 2 Sweet Pod and at OMG Corey B. So first up, man, where else could I start? Look, man, all of these releases, I'm not going to go through the, every name. I'm pretty sure you've seen the list by now. Over hundreds of people released, I cut, or furloughed. Uh, just a lot of things going on whether that be with wrestlers uh, agents or it's uh, workers within the company over a hundred people man uh, the reports were and uh, man and this is just sad man like initially for this podcast I was going to turn it and say you know what where would they where would all of these guys and girls be uh, be the best fit for which company would, could they go to next and Man, I just got sad thinking about it. Like, I just got sad trying to tr- think about the situation, how they're out of jobs, how so many talented people are out of jobs. And a lot of people say that, you know what? You can't blame Vince McMahon. You know, he's running the business. And you know what? I get where you're coming from, but look, bruh. Vince McMahon got a lot of money, and he has paid a lot of money to a bunch of part-timers. I can blame him for that. I can blame him for giving $15 million to Tyson Fury, to which when he, when all of these part-timers were getting all of this dough from Saudi and wherever, we were saying it was a bad idea then, and it's a bad idea now. You leave one of those part-timers out, and we're probably not having this conversation. No, not probably. We are not even having this conversation. You don't pay one of those guys, man. Here's the deal, bruh. And this is an already tough time. You've seen the Drake Maverick video on Twitter, to which at that point, the guy's just breaking down. He's still somehow in the Cruiserweight tournament. I don't know how, but the guy's just breaking down. And at that point, I said, bruh, I just need to get off of Twitter. Because I'm starting to break down all the way around a tough situation. And eventually these guys and girls will shake back. People like EC3 will shake back. And it will be interesting to see where they go next. But now I'm just not at that time of thinking like that. Uh, A lot of things just came out yesterday, man. Uh, One in particular... I've seen wrestlers responding with tweets and videos. One video in particular, man. Seth Rollins. Look, man, he had not a, a lot of kind things to say. He talked about coming together, but he framed it in the sense of putting on the cape for WWE. He talked about how what he doesn't like is uh, is that people are coming at WWE. Look, man, here's the deal. It's already a tough time as it is. WWE just kind of poured, not kind of, WWE just poured gasoline on the raging inferno of panic and stress and anxiety that we are in today. So you got to understand that people going to be upset. That's just it, Seth Rollins. And WWE is just going to have to take it. That's just it. Whether they're right, whether they're wrong, they're just going to have to take it. And I just get tired of Seth Rollins putting on a cape for WWE every time. Whether it was when John Moxley criticized him, here came Seth Rollins putting on the cape for WWE. Like, now is not the time, man. He had a lot of kind things to say. If, if he would have left it at that, it would have been a good video. But 
look man i'm just not with it overall man at the end of the day god man i just hate to see so many talented girls guys agents whatever the case may be lose out on worth and oh man i hope they shake back they will shake back i'll go ahead and speak that they will shake back but moving on to the next topic ladies and gentlemen WWE was deemed essential as an essential business by the Florida governor. And <laughs> oh man. Like everybody's on Twitter is like, what? Since when is wrestling an essential business to the world? Like we ain't talking about being essential to wrestling fans we're talking about being essential to the entire united states and that ain't essential man and there's a lot of theories going around linda mcmahon had a super pack and she paid 18.5 million to florida and everybody's like you know what i did it and i'm not here to say on this day that you know what we have unequivocal evidence behind it but you know what i it, 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 it's certainly feasible it, it would certainly make sense that linda mcmahon paid that money and wwe got deemed essential i can see it happening so there's a lot of things going on with wwe and on top of all of this we got bob arum coming in here if you don't know who bob arum is bob arum is a boxing promoter to which i know very well i watch a lot of boxing he said that you know what i'm gonna start i'm gonna try to run some fights in florida and i'm gonna try to run it in wwe's facility and they didn't open up a whole can of worms deeming wwe essential and like it is so dumb and like it has people up in arms and rightfully so so moving on ladies and gentlemen we got speaking of people up in arms ronda rousey Look, man, Ronda Rousey went out and she ticked off a whole lot of people. Call wrestling fake fighting. You know what? If y'all don't understand what real fighting is, something along those lines. I won't get into the full quote for the uh, sake of time. But you know what? You know, you know what I got to know what I got to say. You know what I got to do? This is what I got to do. Round of applause. Round of applause because look, man. Ronda Rousey got exactly what she wanted. She used the cheap heat, wrestling is fake thing. And you know what? People came out in drones. Fans came out in drones. The women came out in drones. The men came out in drones. The women on the rosters came out in drones. And you know what? Ronda Rousey got the heat that she was looking for. And you know what? Once she gets, once she got heat the first time, she went and poured gasoline back onto the fire and talked about how, you know what, she was in MMA and that's real fighting or whatnot. She like like she 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 got y'all she uh, as in the words of Sid Punch, she got y'all wrapped around her little finger. Like it, it is true. And uh, you know what? All I can do is sit here and give her credit. She got heat. Uh, apparently, obviously, it's a work. I mean, come on. That's why I'm not sitting up here upset or anything. You're not going to work me. Obviously, wrestling, uh, when, when Ronda Rousey got hurt in that main event, in that WrestleMania main event, it was real then, wasn't it? But, you know what? I don't get worked up about it because I know, look, clearly it's a work. Ronda Rousey is going to come back to WWE at some point. They need a heel. Because at this point, I'm going to keep it real. Which WWE needs Ronda Rousey more than Ronda Rousey needs WWE at this point. Pretty sure Ronda Rousey has got enough money to last a lifetime. WWE, when it comes to the Raw roster, they need a legitimate woman on that roster. They've run through every single body on that show. And now they have no one left but Bianca Belair. And she just debuted and she's with the Street Profit. Something that I necessarily don't like. But moving going back to the subject. Yes, WWE needs Ronda Rousey. Because she is a legitimate wrestler. A legitimate 
a character that hasn't been that hasn't lost any type of momentum whatsoever and she would be a legitimate heel to Becky Lynch so yes WWE needs Ronda Rousey more than Ronda Rousey needs WWE Ronda Rousey has everyone worked over and I'm just sitting there like man y'all gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe again like y'all gonna let her get y'all all worked up again like yeah you know what a round of applause to Ronda Rousey she she got everybody and whatever she says like it's 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 everybody's hanging on ronda rousey's everlasting words whatever she says it's getting a response it may be a cheap heat response but she's getting a response so i gotta give her credit so moving on to guys that i've always given credit to the revival and man with all of the stories that have happened since the revival got released feels like this happened three two three weeks ago or something man that's what it feels like but the revival got released last week and i don't know if i can say it's quite the shocker we all knew it was going down that road but obviously no one knew it was coming this fast they have a no compete clause as well and you know what man I, I was quite excited when I seen this because they were getting wasted in WWE. It is what it is. And you see it with so many NXT talent. Like, that is an issue that they need to address. I refuse to believe that it's on every talent. Like, we see this far too often. A great rise in NXT. You get caught up to the main roster and down the tubes you go. Like, sure, there are names that have thrived, but there are more names that have just been misused or have went down the tubes for nothing. And the Revival, a tremendous tag team, all you had to do was tell them to go in the ring and work, and you had an established tag team. And they just put them in oozy hot segments, and like, it just didn't work out. And I will talk about, you no, know, I got here listed, you no know, best fit for the revival. And you know what? Here's the deal. I think any company they go to will be a great fit. So there is no, not necessarily a best fit for them. But I will say this. We already have an established back and forth between the Revival and the Young Bucks. They said that they would fight one day. So there's a lot of people out there, including myself, really, if they went there, i like to see that get paid off. The Revival versus the Young Bucks in AEW. I'd rather the, the Revival goes to New Japan. That would be great too. Impact, that would be great. They can go anywhere and be great. But the Revival versus the Young Bucks and AEW is a match that I feel has to happen sooner rather than later uh, when they make their debuts where, wherever they do. So I'm excited. I got to say, man, before I move on, Pickle fans, Daniel Brown was half right, man. We, we, we talk about the Revival and 100% of the fans said they were getting misused on the main roster. Then the Revival gets released. And some of those fans are going around saying, oh, they was born anyway. Our oh, good riddance. Oh, man, Daniel Bryan was right. He, he was right. Some fans can be fickle sometimes. And that was a main case of it last week. So now, as I move on, Andrade. Quite the interesting thing going on here. Selena Vega has a stable now. And uh, it, it, it's official that it, 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 it seems like it's official that it's a stable now with Andrade and Austin Theory and Angel Garza. These are three extremely talented guys. And it looks like a stable is here. And they dominate. Here's, here's, what I, here's the only thing, here's the only problem that I have. They dominated Raw. Angel Garza dominated. Austin Theory dominated. They all came out after each match, and it looks like, okay, we got a dominant stable here, and I'm all for it. So we get down to the main event. It's Andrade versus uh, Drew McIntyre. Why did I blank out there? Andrade versus Drew McIntyre, and the stable just gets ran through. Like, Angel Garza gets knocked out, Austin Theory gets knocked out, and, and Drew McIntyre picks up a quick win. 
I, I, before I move on, like, man, they had to get a dub there. Like, they just pushed them off to the side. I did not like that. I felt like that was a must win for Andrade. And he just lost the match. And, like, that is not a good look for this stable. I wish them the best. But, man, that was a bad look in the main event. We'll see how it turns out going forward. So, moving on to the next topic. Seth Rollins, uh, after this match, we had Seth Rollins come down. He takes out Drew McIntyre. He stares at the title. And, like, here we are. And the first thing I say is, Seth Rollins is next in line? Didn't he lose to Kevin Owens? Seth Rollins should be in the back of the line. That's just my opinion here. Like, he should not be taking out the, the world champion. That's the way I feel here. That guy should be in the back of the line. I let Seth Rollins is majorly talented, but if you were going to go with Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre, why not have... <clears throat> Why not have Seth Rollins beat Kevin Owens at WrestleMania? That's just my opinion on this matter. I don't have Kevin Owens win if you're going down this line. As in theory, like, where is Kevin Owens? He should be out here next week saying, that, you know what? I deserve the title shot. We'll see how it turns out. But it's looking like it's going to be Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. going to be a phenomenal match. But Seth Rollins should be in the back of the line. Moving on. Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt. Look, man, I'm watching uh, SmackDown last week, and main event's over. Braun Strowman destroys Shinsuke Nakamura, and we have this back and forth with Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt, and it looks like we're getting a Braun Bray Wyatt storyline, and I gotta say that this is a bad idea. This is very, very bad in the words of Stephen A. Smith. Like, this is not gonna turn out good. We just spent all of this time talking about Bray Wyatt and Goldberg and Roman Reigns and, and how Bray Wyatt got screwed over. You really want to go down this route to which I assume this is going to take place at Money in the Bank. We'll see. Uh, this cannot end well either way. If Bray Wyatt wins, you, you screw over Brian because he just won the title and then now you have the case back again with Bray Wyatt as champion you can't have him lose the championship to anybody because it's gonna be a failure once again if Braun Strowman wins then you screw over Bray again after giving him a win versus John Cena so this is a bad idea it's gonna be a great story that can tell a great story but Man, there is no right outcome here. And if you have a non-conclusive result, you can't have that at a pay-per-view with the championship. So you're going to be screwed over anyway. They booked themselves into a corner. And I'm not going to even say that it's going to be interesting to see how they get out. Because they cannot get out of this one without us being upset and without screwing it up. That's just my opinion. We'll see. But we go on, ladies and gentlemen. Watch some Impact Wrestling and 70 year old Mike Jackson. How about this man versus Johnny Swinger? Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, more than likely it's on YouTube. I don't know, but check it out. Johnny Swinger versus Mike Jackson. We got a 70 year old man doing topes, doing the old school, walking across the ropes. It was a cool thing to see uh, last Tuesday night on impact wrestling the opening match mike jackson got down man it was exciting and check it out man this guy worked tremendously at 70 years old apparently he's had plenty of more work that i haven't seen before i had never had never knew anything about him so i'm gonna look him up on youtube as well tremendous moment i enjoyed every bit of it 70 year old mike jackson moving on ladies and gentlemen to aew and not necessarily the highlights from last night's show just yet, but Double or Nothing is moving on and look clearly at this point in time in May, I don't think that's happening in Las Vegas. I think we're getting an empty arena Double or Nothing and like I'm just here to say, man, 50 bucks for an empty arena pay-per-view? Eh, I don't know about that one, Chief. Like, I love AEW, down to my heart, but and 50 bucks, man, and there, there are some people that say, well, you, well, you're not paying for the crowd, you're paying for the wrestlers, 
and I get where people are coming from with that, but the atmosphere means a lot, man. Uh, even more so for AEW than say a WWE because AEW has found this magic elixir to where they have had hot crowds, whether they 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 do something so great with wrestling, or uh, appeal to the fans so great, they have hot crowds each week in each pay-per-view, and that's not gonna be there, and I don't know, man, 50 bucks, we'll, we'll see how it turns out, but eh, I do not know about that one. So, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, into some AEW highlights, not the whole show, some NXT highlights, not necessarily the whole show, We're gonna look at AEW first, um, <clears throat> As always, man, my voice, my throat is just cracking right now. But Coke Cabana, boom, boom, Coke Cabana versus Lance Archer in the TNT Championship Tournament. This was a phenomenal matchup, a hard hitting matchup. Uh, the, the poor guy that Lance Archer laid out before the match, my goodness, man, show some mercy. But I enjoyed this matchup, man. These are two guys, two bigger guys. I, I would say Coke Cabana is not a big guy but he's a big girl guy that can really fly around lance archer is just the new age big guy a traditional big guy that can move around like a cruiserweight for goodness sakes and i like uh what he what he's doing i like his character and i like him in the ring for aew i liked this match as well lance archer picks up the victory here I loved everything about it. He moves on in the TV tournament. Uh, moving on to another highlight, the Bubbly Bunch. Bubbly Bunch, this was phenomenal, man. We had Santana and Ortiz and Sammy uh, Guevara talking trash about Nick Jackson. All of this was well done, a parody of the Brady Bunch. Like, all of this was so well done. Jake Hager talking trash about John Moxley. Jericho talking trash about Moxley spilling orange juice everywhere. This was so well done. AW. Phenomenal. I, I you just keep them up. You, you keep up these segments. I'm gonna keep buying them. I'm gonna keep watching. I'm gonna keep giving you clicks. Keep doing it, AW job. So so well done, man. Well done. And moving on, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of things that were well, I can't say well done, but speaking of Hager and Moxley, moving on to Hager versus Moxley in the main event. I got to say, man, <laughs> excuse me, this was a slow moving match, man. I, we had some decent spots. We had the figure four on the outside on the post uh, in the stands. Like I like that from Moxley, but overall, man. I had conversations with my mutuals on Twitter and I felt the same way. We were promised violence and it was kind of violent. Like we had all of these names, all of these MMA figures, wrestling figures, uh, hyping the match and it was this violent, supposed to be this violent match. No holds barred. Like when you say no holds barred, I expect pure the violence that's what i expect and we didn't quite get that man a lot of people say well they had some psych some good psychology in the match and i'm like bro i'm not trying to see no psychology in the no holds barred match maybe in a regular match i want to fight in a no holds barred match and we kind of got to fight but it it just wasn't the fight that was so to me John Moxley picks up the victory, and another thing that hurt this match, like, it was never in doubt. Come on, man, Jake Hager is not winning the title, and it, it just didn't come across well for me. Like, I absolutely love AEW, but this one just didn't do it for me. That's just my opinion. Moxley picks up the victory. So, moving on to NXT, looking at some of the highlights from NXT. Finn Balor versus Fabian uh, Eichner. A uh, very fast moving match. I absolutely love the way that, you know what, we have a, a build with Finn Balor and Walter going on. So, you know what, we're going to establish that by having Finn Balor going up with members uh, of the Imperium. That's well done. I like it. Uh, we had a good match here. The drop kick through the barricade to Marcel, uh, Marcel Bartel. That was pretty good as well. The result was never in doubt. 
Finn Balor picks up the win, and we will move on with Bill, with Finn Balor, and Walter, and uh, Dream. We'll get into that later as well. Next up, we have the Charlotte Vengeance Net, to where Charlotte basically says she's going to run through the whole division. That wouldn't shock me one bit. I, y'all know my feelings about Charlotte Flair. If you listen to this podcast weekly, look, she's very talented, extremely talented, but enough. Enough already. I'm tired of her having a title. Moving on. Tozawa versus Swerve Scott in the Cruiserweight Tournament. This was a phenomenal match, man. I absolutely, excuse me, loved it. Uh, Akira had a sweet senton over the top ropes. One spot that I absolutely loved was the octopus submission into the dragon sleeper by Tozawa. And this was a phenomenal match. Tozawa goes on to pick up the victory. I really thought Swerve Scott, we'll see how the tournament turns out. But Swerve Scott was my pick to win this thing. We'll see as the tournament uh, you know, goes forward. Uh, he was my pick. But obviously, Tozawa gets the win here. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, we have Raquel Gonzalez versus Tinga Knox. Uh, Raquel dominated early. This was a very quick match. Didn't get a lot of time at all. Shotzi Blackheart came down. Uh, nailed Dakota. Uh, Kai with the helmet. And Tiki Knox picked up a roll up win. Surprise sneak roll up win as Raquel tried to choke slam Shotzi. And man, gotta say, I was surprised about that, but I don't mind it one bit because Tiki Knox should have been getting the win here. So I like. It. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Velveteen Dream promo, and as he was getting into his points about Adam Cole, he was interrupted by Finn Balor, and Finn Balor said, if you go go around talking about the greatest NXT champions, you better mention me, because I am the greatest NXT champion, and there's something about a promo when somebody has a legitimate claim, when it's legitimacy, uh, when it's legit. Uh, the statements that they make that makes the promo even better and what Finn Balor said was legit you could call him the greatest NXT champion in history so what we had here ladies and gentlemen was a match made Velveteen Dream versus Finn Balor and it's gonna go down next week now a lot of people are very excited for that match and rightfully so but I'm just here to say, like, I, this shouldn't be a throwaway match, man. Dream versus Balor should not be a throwaway match on NXT. This is WrestleMania weekend worthy, in my, uh, in my estimation. SummerSlam weekend worthy for me. So I hate to see it being thrown away. The only way that it's safe is if we get a non-conclusive finish. Maybe that happens. And maybe they leave the door open for a future matchup we'll see we're going to the main event we had the undisputed era versus timothy thatcher and matt riddle uh didn't know a whole lot about timothy thatcher but the guy can really fly around he can really work in that ring so i always respect that man we had our rogue dexter loomis a sighting on the outside here that like that was very strange uh, but the match itself was phenomenal. Timothy Thatcher had a phenomenal hot tag. And overall, the, I love that arm bar he, uh, to which he got an immediate tap out from. Timothy Thatcher and Matt Riddle picks up the victory over the Undisputed Era. A phenomenal match. So toward the end of the show, we get Tommaso Ciampa and he's talking about what happened with Johnny Gargano uh, last week. And out of nowhere, here is Killer Cross, man. The guy uh, snapped dope up Tommaso Ciampa, laid him out, looked at the camera, and there is Killer, (laughs) they've changed the guy's name to Carry On (laughs) Cross. You gotta be kidding me, but Carry On Cross, he he stands tall over over Tommaso Ciampa. with Scarlet Porno <laughs> and that's how we close the show that's how we fade to black carry on across <laughs> that is it ladies and gentlemen for this edition of the Two Sweet Podcast you can find me on Twitter at Two Sweet Pie and at OMG Corey B carry on cross my god